Pastor Steve Waldron here with an extremely moving book, Hiroshima or Hiroshima, depending on how you say it, by John Hersey, that Pulitzer Prize winning author. He originally wrote this. This is a first edition in serial format in the New Yorker. It was in six parts. And what Hiroshima does is it traces six people that were anywhere between, this is by Alfred Knopf, that were anywhere between uh, 1,200 yards and 3,000 yards from the center of the blast. And so it came out in 1946, just around a year right after the Hiroshima blast and uh, it is fascinating. I have not had the opportunity to read the whole book yet. If the Lord tarries and wills, I do look forward to reading it. But, uh, you know, I've learned some about the book and uh, it's just fascinating. They didn't know a lot about radiation poisoning then. So they're letting them, you know, after a few days, they're letting them out of the hospital and then they're getting sick again and lesions are coming on their bodies and how these six people made it, how they were destroyed. Now, Hersey went back to Hiroshima in 1985 and wrote a last chapter showing what happened to those six people. Fascinatingly enough, they were ostracized by large swaths of the Japanese people, not just those six, but everybody that went through Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and because they couldn't work, they were weaker, so nobody wanted to hire them, and it was because of their radiation poisoning. And another fascinating thing was, is while there was dramatic um, anti-American sentiment for a little while, that quickly these people did not blame the Americans. They blamed their government for it. They felt like that their government would have destroyed Japan before they surrendered. So that's just another fascinating thing. Some people might say that's propaganda. I don't know. I, I'm just going to tell you, I have never done an in-depth historical research on this book on whether it's propaganda or not. But, you know, there's only really been two groups of people in the world that have ever had atomic weapons dropped on them, and they were both Hiroshima and then Nagasaki. The, the, how this book opens is one of those classic openings. You know, it's kind of like the best of times, the worst of times. How this things, how this thing opens, the first thing, a noiseless flash. At exactly 15 minutes past eight in the morning on August 6, 1945, Japanese time, at the moment when the atomic bomb flashed above Hiroshima, Ms. Toshiko Sasaki, a clerk in the personnel department of the East Asia Tin Works, had just sat down at her place in the plant office and was turning her head to speak to the girl at the next desk. And that's how it opens. That's the very first sentence. At the same moment, Dr. Mazakusa Fuji was settling down cross-legged to read the Osaka Asahi on the porch of his private hospital, overhanging one of the seven deltaic rivers which divide Hiroshima. It's just fantastic. He also gave rise to a new form of, of journalism that was writing factual things in a fictional style. He decried, he said, well that's not a good thing, but um, it's, I think it's called the new journalism. So that was fascinating. So if you can pick, you can get these really inexpensive. This is a first edition. I say it's a first edition. Let me just double check on that. Uh, 1946. Yeah. I'm not sure if we saw it. It is a first edition, and I think I may have paid $4 for it, something like that. It's sold over 3 million copies. It's been in continual print from then until now. So, uh, you know what we need to pray for as Christians is that there's never another nuclear holocaust, or holocaust of any form, especially a nuclear holocaust, because we want to see people saved. And in the book of Revelation, it does look like maybe there's going to be more nuclear conflagration. But we need to be praying God gives peace on earth, the Pax Americana, whatever you want to call it, so we can see people saved. And there'd be open borders, not necessarily in the immigration sense, you know, I know many are against that, but just open borders that people are able to go in and out of countries to preach the gospel. And uh, well, God bless you. I love you. Have a great day in Jesus. Keep praying for peace on earth.